Hello, welcome. Take a moment, try to solve this problem, and then press play and we'll solve it together. Okay, we're told that the function m of t represents the mass of radium over time t in years. So what you have right here is a half-life equation. And it tells us to determine if the function m of t represents growth or decay. Explain your reasoning. So here, remember what we're looking for. We have growth and decay, so that means that if you think about a function, here's growth, right? This is what growth looks like. And on the x-axis is t, time, and then on the y-axis is the mass. So if the mass were increasing over time, which is not, this is a half-life equation, uh, it would grow. And then here, decay what we're looking for is essentially this, right? exponential functions decrease where the height is decreasing as t increases and that's called decay how do we prove it well they can give you any base right here right but what we're trying to establish is that let me rewrite the function down here whatever base they give you whatever way they write an equation if they're ever asking you to prove that it's growth or decay leave the starting value out of it in this case it's a hundred what we're really interested in is this part e to the ln of one half over 1500 and now they put t in the exponent which you can leave there and argue it that way but I'm going to put it out here why can I do that because you can always multiply t by this exponent as a property of exponents right you can multiply these two things and if you multiply t by this the t ends up going here right let me just undo that and you would get the original equation they gave us why did I isolate like this well because what I want to tell you is that Whenever you're looking to prove if something is growth or decay, you can just focus on the base, in this case e, and whatever exponent is attached to it. Right? If this value, this altogether, e to the ln of 1 half over 1500, whatever that is, if that's a positive value uh, and it's over 1, you're going to have growth. And if it is between uh, 0 and, and 1, then you're going to have decay. Now the simpler version, just forget this question for a moment, if I wrote 100 times 2 to the t, that's growth. Why is it growth? Because this thing is positive and greater than 1. If this number though is a half, or something between 0 and 1, then it's decay. Right? So growth versus decay. And it's all about the value of the base altogether. These bases are simpler because they're just a number. Here you have e, which is already complicated, and an expression attached to it. But this whole value, if it's greater than 1 and positive, it's growth. If it's between 0 and 1, though, not exclusive, of course, because it can't equal 1. 1 would be no change whatsoever. 0 would be just 0. Um, if it's between 0 and 1 exclusively, right, then it's decay. So between 0 and 1, and then greater, that's the inclusive sign, exclusive between 0 and 1 for this value here that would be a decay and if it's greater than uh, greater than 1 exclusively all to infinity it's some kind of growth this value here um, so I lost my train of thought there for a second oh yeah I wanted to say that th this can't be negative if it was negative you get really interesting results but it's not what we're concerned with here okay so what are we doing all we have to basically do is show that this is between 0 and 1 half. And if we do that, you can just say that. Um, whatever this value is, say it. Say it's between 0 and 1 half, so it represents decay. I don't think you need to go much further than that, but I'll show you something else you can show quickly to make sure you're, you're getting all the credit you deserve on this problem. All right, so I think I'm still in complex mode, so I'm going to get out of that. Go to mode. Down here, I want to be in real numbers. Okay, hit enter it out and now I do second e to the x is the ln button right here and I'm doing the ln of one half divided by what was that 1500 or 1590 excuse me 1590 boom and we're to get 0.999 Five six four. So you can see that 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 is less than than one, and I'm gonna just go here. So you can say that that 
e to the ln of one half over fifteen. I wrote fifteen hundred here. It should be fifteen ninety. Let me go check that. Yeah, fifteen ninety. You can say is about zero point nine nine, and that's less than one. So I'm just saying it's about point nine nine. Let me just check that because I think I got a different result before. So second e to the power of. I'm gonna put parentheses. See if that makes a difference. The ln of one half fraction divided by fifteen ninety. And yeah, with the same thing. Okay, so I must have typed in the wrong before. So you can say now in words what's happening. Since um, e to the ln of one half over fifteen ninety is less than one, m of t is a decay function. And I would just say what that means. So you, what was it, what does that mean? And as t gets larger, m of t gets smaller when t is greater than or equal to 0. That little last part is needed because the decay function, you can see it here, um, it's always true that it's getting smaller as t is increasing, right? But I want to specify that when t is greater than or larger than zero in this problem because of that this fact right here. T is represented in years. I don't think they would take off any points for that either way, but I want to specify this here uh, when t is greater than or equal to zero because t represents time. Now, it's interesting is I'm, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I really understand what I mean. I could say in general, m of t decreases whenever t increases. So I'm, I'm just saying beyond the properties of this problem, we're dealing with actual time and an actual substance, in general, you have a decay function, whenever you increase t, it goes down. Now, look at all I had to write right there. I think if I just said um, this part right here, this is why I don't like this question, I'm not really sure how much they want or what the what their their rigid rubrics might do, but I'm I'm 100% sure that this part would give me full credit. Once I, saying, once I start saying more than that, I have to keep elaborating so they understand what I'm trying to say. All right, well, <laughs> um, there are other ways to solve this. The dilemma, the reason I don't like this question is because I'm not sure how much to explain. And that's even after looking at student samples. I was trying to look for something to tell you. Um, but the idea is you wanna be precise. So I'm saying precisely what this is about and that is less than one and what that means. All right, thanks, hope this helped.